name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. Uh, there are, of course, lots of different kinds of mothers. There are those that, uh, that uh, have for the traditional families, those in special circumstances, uh, single mothers, there are uh, stepmothers, mothers who step in, all kinds of mothers. And on this special day, once a year, we celebrate them, and they deserve it. You deserve it, mothers. You deserve the jewelry, the, the dinner out, breakfast in bed, a brief respite from the usual round of chores, maybe a little bit break, and of course the thank yous. You deserve all of it. And then there are the cards, those wonderful, cheesy, awkward cards with lines like this one. This is, uh, this is one that I found. Um, M is for the million things that she gave me. O is for the only one who loves me like she does. T is for the tears that she has shed for me. H is for the heart of purest gold in her breast. E is for, what is that? Oh yes, for the eyes with which she loves me. R is for how she's always right. All this together <laughs> spells mother, a word which means the world to me. But of course, there's a problem with all of this kind of hallmarkiness. There's a problem because not everyone is included in Mother's Day. How do we regard those who, uh, for this day, experience great pain because perhaps their mothers have passed away or were absent in their youth or abandoned them or abused them? What do we do with all the women who do not have children in a society which tends to define womanhood as a sort of uh, part of motherhood? Uh, what about those people who feel pain? And uh, what about those who desperately want to have children but have been unable for one reason or another? What must they be feeling on a day like this? which insists on a kind of Norman Walkwell version of what uh, a complete life is supposed to be like. Uh, I know several people who fear that kind of keen longing for to have a child and to be reproductive and have not been graced in that way despite many prayers and even medical intervention. What are we to say to them on a day like this? So I want to uh, suggest that maybe motherhood is not the ultimate greatest love in the universe that is possible. I know, I know, to preach against motherhood on Mother's Day has got to be the worst homiletic mistake ever, but let's just like go with me here for a second. Maybe motherhood, as awesome and wonderful as it is, is only one aspect of the complete and awesome love that God has for us. Because the God love that God has for us is both about the beginning, sure, the alpha, but it's also about the omega, the end. It's a love that encompasses the entirety of our lives because the truth is that unless we're um, really problematic and annoying, we're probably not going to live with our mothers our entire lives, <laughs> right? At least that's usually the, the goal. Uh, and even if we have lived with our mothers for a long time, there's going to come a day when they're probably going to pass away. We will probably outlive them. Certainly that would be our mother's hopes. But the God love is with us always. It is always present. It never abandons us. It is never abusive. It, it never is problematic in all the kinds of ways in which human relationships are potentially complicated and messy. God's love encompasses the end as well as the beginning. And what does that end look like? Well, it has a lot of different shapes. We talk about resurrection, new life, and we, we've spent a lot of time on that theme this Easter. But there's another one suggested to us by today's readings, the possibility of freedom. Uh, freedom from uh, institutions that enslave people. Think of this, this young woman who's following Paul and Silas around, shouting after them. Um, she's imprisoned by multiple things. Uh, I mean, think about the ways in which this woman is trapped. Um, first of all, she's a slave girl, it says. And being a slave girl in Roman society was not a fun existence. Not only that, but she was a fortune teller. She had this occupation that she, it's very unclear about whether she was really free to pursue this or whether this was something that was pushed upon her. And then uh, there's the claim, of course, that she's being possessed by an evil spirit and being, uh, being uh, sort of afflicted in that way. So on multiple grounds, this is a person who is not free. She is not free. But partly because she annoys Paul in the way that she does, he turns around and he heals her in the way that he does. And this causes a minor controversy, but it also sets her free from at least one of the things that had imprisoned her. And so for that, ironically, he himself is thrown in prison. And his freedom comes in the form of this miraculous earthquake that, that happens. Not the first time that God has intervened to, to free his saints, but unusually in this case, he doesn't leave the prison. He stays in it. Uh, this is an example, by the way, of, of kind of uh, nonviolent resistance in a way, which is very interesting. Uh, the fact that he doesn't just jog out of, that, out of that prison as soon as he can, but remains there, is a critical catalyst for the conversion of this, of this soldier that's there guarding them, the prison guard. 
and what a wonderful conversion he has, falling at the feet of this man. Who, and, and why? I mean, it doesn't say that the guard experienced the earthquake and had this kind of fear or dread of the power of God that he was witnessing. It says merely that he's reacting to the, the uh, open gates and his concern that, oh my God, I'm probably going to be killed for this, you know, for neglecting my duty. But Paul saves his life, literally. And by doing so, actually also saves him in other ways, too. So what is it that's so shocking to this prison guard except to come into this empty prison and find the prisoners still there? And by the way, why are the other prisoners still there? I mean, it's evident that, you know, we can see why Paul might want to stay, but what about the other ones? Uh, presumably the, the earthquake threw open all the gates, right? One argument is that it had to do with his singing, that Paul was such an awesome singer that he was singing these, these beautiful hymns that were so moving to the other prisoners that they, they were with him. They had a sort of solidarity with him, and they decided to follow his leadership and remain in prison with him. And by the way, we don't hear about their, what happens to them at the end of the story, but, but we can only imagine. God's love encompasses all of it, the beginning and the end. This whole book, this Bible that we have here, this nice big thick Bible, is in essence a love letter of God to us. It is in essence a document which tells us about the entirety of God's historical sense of, of, of what God is about when he is about us. It is a document that begins and ends with love. It begins with creation and it ends with the wonderful uh, verses from Revelation that we heard today, you know, the Alpha, the Omega, come Lord Jesus, come, amen, amen. And what a beautiful beautiful testament this is to a love that goes beyond just motherhood, which is awesome. Don't get me wrong. Apple pie, motherhood, beautiful. But there's something even greater, a love that can encompass the entirety of our being, the beginning and the end. So friends, on this Mother's Day, I, I, reflect you to, I encourage you to reflect not only on the love that you have for your mother, and, and of course, do nice things for her today. Uh, you know, send her a card if you haven't already, or at least an email, you know, or something. Make that gesture of affection, because you know, you know, not only does she deserve it, but you probably don't do it nearly enough. You don't call her enough. I'm telling you, you don't call her enough. So please, do that. But also reflect on the way in which this is just a, a, a small piece of the kind of love that God has for us which not only speaks of the beginning to our lives, but of the end as well. Amen. So as we customarily do, I'll open this up if anybody has anything they want to say in response to this.